Iram, doing? Yes, sir. Are you doing the previous year? Are you solving the previous year question paper? Uh, yes, sir. I have I did it. Okay. I've done it for the molecular basis. Great, great, great. I did it for the principles of inheritance chapter. Very good. Yes, yes. That is, uh, uh, if you are doing that's really very good uh, because uh, that is very important. That is very important. By this way, you will get the taste how the questions are uh, coming, like which are which is the important part, which is not the important part. Are we uh, are we in the right direction or not? That will give you the confidence as well, and along with that, you will get the sense from where the question and which type, which type of the questions are coming. Example. So uh, the next topic is that uh, that is the process of recombinant DNA formation, right? So I have uh, tried to show uh, tried to show uh, with the help of this uh, schematic diagram. Right, and uh, you have to keep on taking the uh, screenshot of this one. And after the class, don't keep it as a screenshot. Just note down. And even if you have right now the time, you can note it down. Right, because it's easy. So how the recombinant are formed means the process by which we form the recombinant DNA. Right, this is the process. So uh, since the starting uh, slide, we are uh, we are uh, just discussing that how the recombinant are formed uh, now okay so now this is the agrobacterium tumefaciation agbt right uh, from agbt we have taken out this is the bacteria and we have discussed this bacteria yesterday only uh, okay so uh, from uh, here we have extracted the TI plasmid, right? Now, from the TI plasmid, uh, we have removed the tDNA, right? That is the cancer producing the uh, gene. We have removed that, and that is a part of insertion and deactivation. And after removing this gene, in place of that, we have inserted the recomb. This is the foreign gene, right? Now, this is the, or uh, you can say it's a recombinant DNA, or you can say it's a recombinant TI plasmid. Sir, uh, yes. The TI plasmid and tDNA are the same thing. Uh, no, no. Look, actually, this plasmid is TI plasmid. tDNA yeah. is a part of this plasmid, right? Ah, okay. The tDNA okay, is this tDNA sequence. Actually, tDNA. This is complete. This complete part is made up of actually DNA. We know it's a small part of DNA. Actually, this TI tDNA. It's a part of gene, right? It is a gene. This gene is responsible for cancer. By the way, can anyone tell me what is the cancer? How we can define the cancer? What is cancer? Anyone of you? What is cancer actually? You know, it's a very uh, uh, strange thing. That, yes, yes, sir. The, the cells uh, will start multiplying. And uh, they'll form a tumor in that. Like, I think okay. they don't have that uh, property where they know when to stop uh, multiplying and then they continuously multiply and right. then form right. a tumor. That contact right. inhibition. Very good. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Almost you have defined the cancer. Actually, simple word we can say the uncontrolled division of the cell is called cancer. And when uncontrolled division takes place, they keep on accumulating the lump, the tumor, the lump which is formed that is called tumor. Those cells start competing with the, competing for the nutrition with other cells, first thing. That's why the patient become weaker. Second thing, those cancerous cells start producing toxin. And that toxin protein key start spreading throughout the body with the help of blood that is a cancer right so any uncontrolled division is called cancer right and uh, then we will discuss in the disease part right the cancer part is there in disease part so this tdna is a part of gene right? it's a type of gene the tdna make a gene which is responsible for cancer so we remove this harmful gene right in place of harmful gene so with the help of insertional deactivation we have deactivated by 
moving the cancerous gene, we have deactivated the cancerous property. Right. Now, in place of that cancerous gene, which is the tDNA, in place of that, we have inserted our own gene of interest. Now, uh, this plasmid have, in, have been inserted inside the tDNA. Uh, sorry, this plasmid have been inserted in the uh, this uh, bacteria or the plant cells, plant cell. And after that, we grow it with the help of tissue culture. And when we grow it, the property uh, which has been incorporated with the help of, of this external DNA or external plasmid, that property will come in this plant, right? And that's how this is this, we make a transgenic plant. Now, it seems easier, but it's not that much easy. So how the process takes place? I have tried to show this process with the help of this schematic diagram. Better you note it down with your pen and paper, right? That's better rather taking the screenshot because it's easy and it, it takes very less. Time. In first process, we have to take out a DNA of our interest, right? Means the beneficial DNA, which is uh, beneficial for us. So what we will do, we will take out the DNA from any nucleus. Suppose that this is an insulin gene, right? Or this is the growth hormone gene. So what we will do, we will take a human cell. From the human cell, we will take out the nucleus and from the nucleus, we will take out the DNA. When we take out the DNA, DNA is not in the pure form. Why? DNA may be in the chromatin form. DNA may be in the transcription form, some parts. Some part may be in the translation form, right? So what we do first, if the DNA is extracted from the bacterial cell, try to understand. If the source of DNA or desired DNA, if the source of DNA is bacterial cell, we will treat this DNA with lysozyme. Lysozyme is a hydrolytic enzyme. It will remove the unwanted things which are attached with the DNA or which are the which stick with the DNA. If this is plant cell, we will treat this DNA with the help of a cellulase enzyme. If it is fungi DNA, we will treat with the enzyme chitinase, right, to remove the chitin part. If plant cell, we will uh, treat with cellulase uh, to remove the that uh, cellulose part, right? So the enzyme which is required that will depend on the source of the DNA. After then, when we have uh, purified the DNA, again, the further purification process takes place. That's how we isolate. Now the DNA may have histone protein, DNA may have, have RNA, right? If half of the transcription taken place, then RNA will be there, RNA polymerase will be there, DNA polymerase will be there, right? So for the further purification, we treat the DNA, this DNA with the ribonuclease. Ribonuclease is an enzyme which remove RNA from the, that DNA. Histone protein and other proteins are removed with the help of proteases. So this purified DNA is treated with ribonucleases and proteases. After treatment of with the ribonucleases and proteases, now we have got the purified DNA. Further, this purified DNA is treated with chilled ethanol, right? When we treat with the why we are treating the chilled ethanol, because at this time we want the, we have to get the suspension of DNA. When we treat DNA with the chilled ethanol, you will get a fine suspension thread of DNA, like this way. DNA will settle down at the bottom, right? And keep uh, and uh, you'll get the suspension. Now this is the time to cut down the DNA. And we have already understood that uh, we have already studied that a cutting DNA is possible with the help of restriction endonucleases. So we cut down the DNA with the help of restriction enzymes to cut to get the desired DNA. Now this DNA, if the DNA sample is a small one, right? If it is a smaller sample, what we will do? We have to multiply the DNA. For multiplication of the DNA we pass DNA through the PCR, polymerase chain reaction. After passing it with the polymerase chain reaction, we got the, we get the multiple copy of the DNA or millions of the copy of the DNA. Now we separate this, this DNA fragment with the help of gel electrophoresis, right? So gel electrophoresis is used to get the desired DNA. After that, getting our DNA of interest or desired DNA, we add the DNA to the vector, right? Vector means that to the plasmid, to the virus, where, which is, whatever your vector is, right? And we add this DNA with the help of ligase enzyme. Now the recombinant DNA is formed, formation will take place. Now, what will happen? Now this recombinant DNA is inserted in the 
bacteria or whatever the organism wherever we want to insert it right and now this bacteria basically the bacteria if it is inserted in bacteria those bacteria are grows with uh, uh, we grow those bacteria on a, a gross plate right and you know that we can re we can remove the recombinant from the non recombinant with the help of selectable marker right so suppose that uh, the selectable marker is the MP strain. We treat that uh, uh, that agar plate with this MP strain. Those which are the recombinant, they will not die, and those which are not recombinant, they will die. And that's how we select our transgenic organism uh, or uh, the bacteria, which is the trans uh, whatever the transgenic is, right? So this is the process of recombinant DNA technology. Is it clear or not? Tell me. This is the complete process. You have to remember the step, like. This is step. This is step. The fine thread suspension we get with the treating with the ethanol that have been asked. This lysozyme cellulose chitinase they have been asked in exam. Already asked question. Is that clear to all of you? Tell me, guys. Yes, sir. Okay. So note it down. And this is the way to make the notes. This is this is the way to make the notes. Please take the screenshot if if you haven't taken. Okay, great. Okay, polymerase chain reaction. We haven't discussed it. PCR in PCR, this these steps are very important. So, so I think we have discussed what is the PCR. Have we discussed that? Or you know that why why we use the PCR polymerase chain reaction? Look, I thought that we have discussed it. Okay, fine. So why PCR is required? Please try to understand. Suppose that. You get a DNA of the Jurassic time period, a live DNA of Jurassic time period. Now you can say that how sir it's possible. That's quite possible. Uh, there are number of the mammoth uh, who are buried inside the ice of Antarctica, and some part of some frozen part and buried part have been found in Antarctica. So suppose that you get a DNA, a DNA sample. For the study, you want to multiply this DNA sample. What you will do? First thing. Second thing. Suppose that a person has been murdered. Before murdering, the he fought with the attackers. While fighting, uh, fighting with the attackers, he uh, like try to uh, 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 try to uh, fight with uh, those attackers. And the cells, like the uh, sample of hair, uh, have fell down over there. And uh, some the part of the skins are there inside the nail. So, but the part that that is the sample of DNA of a criminal. That sample is very small amount. That sample is in very small amount. How uh, how you will do? So, for both of the purpose, first we will take that the smaller sample, and then we will try to multiply from the single DNA. You can make one billion DNA copies from a single DNA. You can make one billion copy of the DNA within hours with the help of PCR technique. So, PCR technique is basically. The purpose behind it to increase the number of the copies of the small sample of DNA, right? That is the purpose behind PCR. And basically, these are the purposes when this PCR is used. Then what we do? Look, first, this is the DNA. Before going into that, I want to tell you that we use the in PCR technique we use a special kind of the uh, a special kind of the. Uh, uh, DNA polymerase. The name of that DNA polymerase is tag polymerase. The name of DNA is tag uh, DNA polymerase is tag polymerase. The function of this polymerase is same. Same. It polymerizes the DNA. What is that function? Same. That is the function of DNA polymerase. Polymerize DNA five to three prime. The same thing. Polymerization take place five to three prime. Right. So, sorry, three to five prime. Right. 
take place 3 to 5 primer right the same thing now what is the tag polymerase tag polymerase is a type of dna polymerase it is found in a bacteria and the name of that bacteria is thermus aquaticus thermus aquaticus is a type of archae bacteria now you have to tell me what are the archae bacteria what are the archae bacteria yes other tell me Sir, they are the bacteria that were found like the first type of bacteria, the first type right. of organism. Right, right. Uh, actually, they are the most ancient bacteria, the most oldest. They are the oldest cell of the world, right? Rather than they are the oldest organism of the world, and they are basically found in uh, in hospitable condition where other organisms are not found. Right. Uh, they are found in thermosynic vent. Thermosynic vent means the volcano inside the oceans. Right. They are found in thermoceric vent. They are found in presence of like methane gas. They are found in the uh, uh, sulfur. They are found in the salt lakes. So they are found in very harsh condition. They are in very extreme condition. And they are the oldest cell of the world. Um, Archae means actually, actually the name itself represents. Archae means old and bacteria means bacteria. So thermus aquaticus is a thermophile. Thermophile means they are found in the, uh, uh, found in very high temperature, right? They are found in volcanic vent. Volcanic vent means the mouth of volcano, which is found at the floor of ocean floor, right? They are basically, these bacteria are found in 200 degree, at 200 degree centigrade temperature. At this temperature, no cell can survive other than archaea bacteria, this thermophiles, right? And that's why, so their DNA polymerase is capable of working at the very high temperature. Other DNA polymerase cannot work, cannot replicate at this temperature. Why? Because DNA polymerase are basically made up of the protein and melting temperature of the melting point of the protein is 60 degrees centigrade. At the 60 degrees centigrade DNA, that protein is not melting, right? So other DNA polymerase will melt at this temperature, but tag polymerase, which is found in thermos aquaticus, do not melt at this temperature. Uh, is that clear? Tag polymerase can work at very high temperature, right? So please take this screenshot and note it down. These are the separate questions which have been asked. So this is one thing is clear why we use the tag polymerase during the PCR. Now come to the step of PCR. In polymerase chain reaction, we take a sample DNA. While taking the DNA, we increase the temperature 95 degrees centigrade. This process is called denaturing. During denaturing, what will happen? The hydrogen bond, these hydrogen bond, which are present between the uh, these, uh, uh, they separate actually. So these hydrogen bond get separate and DNA strand separate. So both are both strands work as the template strand. After that, in the medium, that gel part or that medium part where this reaction is going on, our DNA primers are already present. Nucleotides are already present. These nucleotides are already present. Tag polymerase is already present. After denaturation, we second stage it annealing. Annealing, annealing word means cooling down, right? So we start cooling down. At the time of annealing, temperature will be 55 degrees centigrade. So look, at the time of denaturing, in, uh, denaturing DNA, first step, the temperature will be 95 degrees centigrade. At the time of annealing, temperature will be 55 degrees centigrade. Means cooling down will take place. Now, the formation of, now what will happen? The formation of this uh, RNA primer or attachment of RNA primer takes place at the both end, at the three prime end, right? Again, the DNA polymer, the polymerization will start from there at the uh, three to five means the DNA polymerase itself will work five to three direction, right? Now what will happen? Tag polymerase will start forming in this direction. Formation of a DNA on the uh, RNA primer will take place, right? And within a minute, formation of two new strand formation takes place. We repeat this cycle 20 to 40 times and we'll get the number of the DNA, right? And when uh, the, uh, after annealing, we again increase the temperature 72 degrees centigrade. When the census of new DNA takes place, temperature remains at the 72 degrees centigrade. And that's how, uh, by repeating this process again and again, we make a 1 billion copy of DNA from a single DNA. This process is called PCR, polymerase chain the Tell me guys, is it clear? Sir, PCR polymerase is working in both 3 to 5 prime and 
Five to three prime directions. Or yes, 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 yes. Actually, right. This is this is the actually beauty of uh, tag polymerase. Right. Tag polymerase work in both of the direction. Here, here in three to five direction into five to three prime end. Right. Here also into five to three prime end at both of the strand. So this property is found only in tag polymerase, not found in other normal polymerase. It make leading strand at the both of the end. This property is also peculiar with the tag polymerase. Is that clear? Yeah. Take this screenshot, please. So what do you have to remember? First, tag polymerase. Second, annealing. What should be the temperature denaturation process? What should be at annealing process? What should be at synthesizing process? And the question you, which uh, has asked in the last, uh, that that it takes place at the both of that, right? It form continuous strand at the both of the DNA uh, parental strand. Last but not the least, that is a bioreactor. You will hardly get the question from this bioreactor, but yes, this is a part of topic which we need to discuss. So bioreactor is just a machine where we uh, make a large amount of the biological product. Uh, suppose that you have a transgenic bacteria with the insulin gene. You want to make the insulin injection. How you will do with that? How you will make a large amount of the insulin? Look. Uh, this is a bioreactor. Outer side of the bioreactor is made up of a jacket, which is known as the cooling jacket. This jacket do not allow the temperature to change the temp internal temperature, right? There is a motor at the top. The motor is connected with a shaft, shaft having multiple paddle wheels. These paddle wheels keep on steering the nutrient, first thing. So they keep on steering the nutrient so that the uh, nutrient do not settle down. Second thing, they keep on um, uh, providing the availability of the oxygen throughout the material, right? And next, the temperature is maintained over here. Now, the next thing is that uh, the air filtered air is passed from the base so that the aeration takes place. And in the presence of air or oxygen, the aerobic bacteria multiply fast, right? Uh, from, from here, we keep on taking out the uh, this uh, substance uh, or this fluid. And from the fluid, we extract the biological product right uh, there are two process first process is called actually uh, this one one thing wait continuous process This is the continuous process. We are continually, we are taking out the water, taking out that uh, supplement and uh, taking out that uh, uh, part. And from uh, taking out this liquid and from this liquid, we are extracting our biological product. Second thing is called batch process. In batch process, what we do, we do not take out this liquid. Once this reaction keep on, uh, 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 once this reaction complete, we stop the bioreactor. We take out the complete, complete uh, um, so, uh, solution outside we take out complete product then we uh, fill it with the fresh one right so there are two processes and by two top continuous and the batch process whiskey beer and all that they are also made with the help of these bioreactor only is that clear easy uh, now go through with the complete chapter and ask me if you have any doubt any doubt in your chapter. Then we will move in the next chapter. That is application of the biotechnology.
is there any question tell me all of you then we'll start with a new topic new chapter alia eram heather tell me no doubt eram any doubt alia any doubt no sir okay fine fine so keep on doing the previous year question and keep on collecting the doubts now the next chapter is uh, biotechnology uh, application part right so biotechnology application okay uh, when you will do the previous year question you will get one more kind of the question which of the following transgenic or which of the following is not transgenic right so actually there are number of the transgenic which have been made today right and when we talk how many transgenic have been made till till date so there are now there is a very uh, long list but when you get the question in your medical examination that will be from the ncr right so these are the name of the organism rabbit uh, rat rabbit sheep cow fish right these are the transgenic they have been made right so please note down the name of these organisms the transgenic the transgenic which have been made right now uh, what is the use of these transgenic animals purpose of this uh, making these transgenic animals or transgenic organism sorry rather than animal we can say transgenic organism because when you make the transgenic you make the uh, animal you make Make the plant, you make, you make the bacteria, all functions, even fungi. So, first purpose is to study the normal physiology and development of the organism. When you have to study the physiology and development of the organism, then you study the transgenic organism. Second, when you study the diseases, you have to study diseases. Where then we use the transgenic organism to get the biological product. We use the transgenic organism to test the vaccine safety. Vaccine safety cannot be tested directly on the man or the humans, right? Suppose that you have made the vaccine for the corona, you cannot directly use in the uh, humans, right? You require some organism. So to test the safety of the vaccine and uh, uh, chemical testing for some chemical testing, we use this transgenic organism. So this is the purpose behind making the transgenic organism. Okay. now biotech and their application right uh, just let me watch okay okay bt got me there right many time the question have been asked from the gene therapy so can anybody tell me what is the gene therapy gene therapy okay uh gene therapy is Sir, the technique uh, yes please tell me Sir, uh, it's like it's like uh, modifying the genes to like cure the the disease and all. It's usually done uh, for that. Very good. Uh, to cure a disease, mainly genetic diseases, right? To cure genetic diseases, which are normally incurable, right? And when we do the this therapy, gene therapy, we do not require any medicine, right? So gene therapy is the therapy. which is basically used to cure the genetic diseases and where the medicines are not required we just require the gene therapy so there is a disease that name of that disease ada deficiency this gene therapy first time it was done on the 5 year old girl 
right and she was affected with ada deficiency so what is the ada so ada is a type of enzyme right so what is ada deficiency ada deficiency is a type of disease right the full form of ada is adenosine diaminase uh, adenosine diaminase disorder right so ada is adenosine diaminase what is the purpose of adenosine diaminase adenosine diaminase is a type of enzyme it is used for the purpose of maintenance of human body immunity so without adenosine diaminase immunity cannot be maintained why because this ada is responsible for maturation of wbc if the wbc will not mature then immunity will not be maintained right so ada is responsible for maturation of wbc what happen in this disorder in this disorder deletion of a gene takes place right due to gene mutation every line is the question over here why this disease takes place the purpose behind this disease sorry uh, the uh, factor behind this disease is deletion mutation right we have already discussed deletion duplication translocation transversion remember right so one of the one of the factor which we discussed that is the deletion right so because of the deletion mutation a gene responsible for formation of ada get deleted when ada gene is deleted ada formation will not take place it will cause aza deficiency now what is the what is the how how we can maintain this uh, that portion so there is ada required to maintain the immu uh, immunity right so wbc formation will not take place so how you will cure that disease there is a first uh, there are per, uh, multiple uh, way to cure this disease right what you exactly are doing right now nowadays what we are doing the first and foremost thing is bone marrow transplantation what happens in bone marrow transplantation in bone marrow transplantation the part which is uh, responsible for formation of wbc and maturation of wbc we remove the bone marrow that part we take the bone marrow from another person and, and transplant over there so that that deficiency could be removed but, but this is one of the difficult uh, most difficult uh, process why because out of 1 lakh person only two people will have the same kind of the bone marrow so bone marrow your bone you get the uh, match of your bone marrow that is really almost herculean task so it is not that much easy once you get the person whose bone marrow matches with you and the person is ready to give you that is also a very difficult task because there are some side effect of donating the bone marrow as well, right second thing is enzyme replacement therapy in enzyme replacement therapy at every time you give the injection of that enzyme ada enzyme the person get the ada enzyme inside their blood and maturation of wbc takes place right that is a continuous process every time every day you have to give that injection so that the person could survive so that the immune system of person could work the third option is gene therapy in gene therapy what exactly you do in gene therapy we take out the lymphocyte lymphocyte are a type of type of wbc right we take out a lymphocyte or wbc cell of patient we grow them outside in a culture medium ada ada forming c dna copy of dna which form ada is inserted in vector now the gene is inserted in lymphocyte right this gene with the help of vector gene is inserted in lymphocyte those lymphocyte which having this gene are grown in larger amount and again they are inserted inside the person but the life span of lymphocyte is limited it is it may be for few years right because the wbc are not immortal so after a particular time period you have to range it right so what is the final solution for this ada deficiency can anyone answer me even with the help of gene therapy this kind of the gene therapy you have to uh, at the interval of every few year you have to insert those uh, new wbc right so that is an also, also not a permanent solution either please tell me what can be the permanent solution iram alia uh, yes yes tell me sir uh, inserting the uh, the lymphocyte cells into the embryo at the early stages very good, like very good. Yes. 
at embryo stage uh, we can uh, do the gene therapy uh, rather than inserting lymphocyte it's uh, actually you know at the embryo stage for of lymphocyte do not take place. Uh, even formation of WBC do not take place in bone marrow. Uh, yes, I have a question for you. At embryo stage, formation of WBC do not take place inside the embryo, human embryo, or any mammal embryo. Blood transfusion do not take place for the placenta. We have already discussed, right? We will discuss. Sorry, I have discussed in some another batch. Uh, blood transfusion of mother and child do not take place through the placenta, but the baby have the blood from where this blood is coming. If I straight question, I will. I would like to ask a question. Uh, an infant, or rather, infant, an embryo, a human embryo, have blood inside its body. Formation of blood do not take place in bone marrow. So, where does this blood formation will take place? From Any genius? Yes. Blood placenta, umbilical cord, something. Transfusion of blood do not take place. Placenta is just a connection through which the nutrient, carbon dioxide, excretory material, enzymes, and nutrition that is exchanged. That's it. Nothing else. If transfusion the, between the blood of mother and embryo <laughs> will take place, the baby will get the joint disc. Yes, Heather, tell me. Sir, uh, the liver of the embryos, they, they form the... Excellent, 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 right, very good, excellent, that is the answer actually, hemopoiesis, at the embryonic stage, hemopoiesis takes place uh, at the uh, liver, so uh, WBC formation, uh, so not WBC, I'm sorry, RBC formation, hemopoiesis only, not leukopoiesis, hemopoiesis, that is the RBC formation takes place at the liver, when, a, when a baby takes the birth, uh, then cartilage convert into bone, and when bone develops, then the bone marrow develops. And when the bone marrow develops, then the formation of WBC takes place. Right. Excellent. Very good. So that was the answer. So is that clear? Is that clear? ADA deficiency, very, very important. Very, very important in this chapter. Number of time the question I've been asked, and you'll get the question from people in previous year question. Every information is important, which is written over here. Great. In molecular diagnosis, uh, we use the PCR, right, polymerase chain reaction. You know that PCR test was done in uh, uh, when the corona time period, the PCR rec uh, report, even you must have submitted many of the examination hall and many of the places while traveling, right? ELISA test, it is the L HIV, it is detection for HIV, right? It, the, this test is same like, PC, same like PCR, right? DNA fingerprinting. Right. That is also uh, done with the help of this molecular diagnosis. And uh, again, so PCR, ELISA, that you have to remember. And these are the technique which is will write, right, just similar to the that uh, DNA fingerprinting. Similar to DNA fingerprinting. ELISA test is similar to DNA fingerprinting. Just a bit. Okay. So, uh, gene transfer. Even uh, uh, along with that, let me check with NCRT as well. Yeah. Gene therapy are discussed. Gene transfer, we know how the gene transfer takes place. That thing we have already discussed. Okay. Again, a very important thing. How the recombinant DNA are transferred? Recombinant DNA are transferred means how, how we transfer this vector from external medium to a cell. Right? Every part of this concept is also a question. Very important. Uh, there is a donor cell. We take out the foreign DNA from the donor cell and we know how we take out the purification process, extraction process, treating with the name, everything is discussed. 
uh, we cut down this foreign DNA with the help of a restriction enzyme. So we have cut down the restriction enzyme. Again, the plasmid is taken out from the bacterial cell. So now the vector is plasmid DNA. Vector DNA is a plasmid. So uh, now what happens? We cut down the uh, same plasmid with the help of that same restriction enzymes. Ligation done. Foreign DNA is admitted. Uh, admitted. Recombinant DNA is made. Now, how we transfer this recombinant DNA, this journey, how we transfer this recombinant DNA from external medium to inside a new bacteria. Now, recombinant DNA have been made. If the organism where with the tar targeted organism is bacteria, suppose that I want to insert our desired vector or plasmid inside bacteria, I will use a technique that is called temperature shock. This technique. What we do in temperature shock? In temperature shock, we first increase the temperature, then suddenly decrease the temperature. Increase the temperature, decrease the temperature. When we increase, decrease the temperature, and the bacteria is kept inside a suspension where recombinant DNA are floating. What happens with the help of this high and low temperature shock, the pores which are present in the bacterial wall, they open. And from those pores, this recombinant DNA is get inserted. So, to insert a recombinant DNA inside a bacteria, we use the technique temperature shock. Clear? If this is a plant cell, now how, how you will insert this recombinant DNA inside a plant cell? We take these vector or recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA or vector is coated with gold or tungsten. This question has been asked. Like gold was also answer and tungsten was also answer, right? So either with the, with the help of gold uh, plating or we with the help of tungsten covering, right? So gold and tungsten are the things. With the help of these, we coat those uh, recombinant DNA with gold or tungsten. Then we have a special type of the gun that is called biolistic gun, or this is also known as the gene gun. So with the help of biolistic gun or gene gun, we bombard these gold or tungsten coated recombinant DNA on the plant cell. That's how we insert these uh, recombinant DNA inside a plant. Okay. So for bacteria, temperature shock. For the uh, plant, this will be biolistic or gene gun. And for the animal cell, for the animal cell, we have a very nanotechnology based micro injections. With the help of those micro injection, we directly inject this recombinant DNA inside the nucleus of animals, right? So there are three techniques of transferring recombinant DNA to their destination. In case of the bacteria, we use the uh, this temperature shock. In case of the plant, we use the ballistic or gene gun. In case of the animal, we use the macro. That's it. Tell me, is that clear? Yes, sir. Please, please yes, take sir. this screenshot. They're very important. How the human insulin is made? Uh, human insulin is called humulin. And in 1883, Illy Lilly is an American company. That Illy Lilly company prepared the sequence of DNA, right? So the credit to prepare this sequence goes to Illy Lilly, right? They prepared a sequence of Insulin DNA, right? And uh, again, there was an, another company uh, who uh, marketed it or who produced it. It literally just uh, made the sequence. It did, it did not produce the insulin, right? And what was the name of that second company? Any one of you? The company which produced first insulin. Actually, the name of that company was Gene Tech. Gene Tech was company which purchased the uh, copyright of this uh, this sequence from the Ellie Lilly and prepared prepared humulin. This insulin, which is called humulin, right? Now, what happened? This human DNA is extracted. Yes. 
studied that there was a disease with uh, yes uh, please uh, be a bit louder yes the, the ada disease was caused by the deletion of a chromosome right uh, ada deficiency was caused by the deletion of a chromosome exactly exactly deletion of gene not chromosome gene. not chrom it's a genetic uh, disorder oh okay it's actually gene it's, it's a gene mutation not uh, a chromosomal aberration right oh, okay sir okay sir i was confused in the it, yes, it yes. was gene mutation or chromosomal aberration Yes, you remember uh, we have studied that chromosome uh, aberration and gene uh, this one uh, yes, gene sir. mutation. Yes, sir. So it's a part of gene mutation, right? Deletion. Okay. And in in part of uh, like uh, remember the in chromosomal aberration the deletion survival is only Cryduchat syndrome. Yes, sir. Yes. Other organism die like other defect other defected uh, um, uh, offspring die right they do not survive it. So, okay, look, uh, first we have to study how the formation of normal uh, insulin takes place in our body. Okay, so uh, which cells produces the insulin? Yes, which cell produces insulin? Then just brainstorming, I am cross checking with the human physiology as well. Beta cell of the Langerhans. Very good beta cell of Langerhans, right? And fine. Beta cell produces insulin, right? And uh, there are some other cells, delta cell, which produces glucagon. Okay. So we'll discuss again in that human physiology part. Fine. So here, look. Gene Tech Company produced the purchased this uh, patent from this lab Illy Lily, and uh, they made the they started making the human insulin uh, that so uh, the normal insulin uh, which is produced in our body like my body and your body how does it work uh, human insulin is made up of three polypeptide chain a chain b chain and c chain. so there are three polypeptide chain in human insulin when it is produced but this is inactive form right it is not mature form immature form after that maturation takes place. During the maturation process, the C polypeptide chain is removed, right? C polypeptide is removed. Now only A and B chain is left. And it is an active form of the human insulin. So with the help of biotechnology, we need not to make the C chain. Why we make the C chain? When A and B chain is the only active insulin, then we make the only A and B chain. The same thing has been done by the uh, this, uh, this company, Illy Illy produced the sequence for the A, A polypeptide chain and B polypeptide chain. That's it. And one more important thing which I want to tell you, right? Uh, when we produce the human insulin, we produce A chain and B chain uh, of polypeptide chain separately. So in transgenic bacteria, we produce A polypeptide chain separately and B polypeptide chain separately. And after that, we ligate them, right? We fuse them, then the insulin formation takes place. Actually, so the same thing is taken place over here uh, with the help of this uh, recombinant DNA. We produces A and B polypeptide chain. We fuse the A and B polypeptide chain with the help of uh, and you know this uh, that A and B polypeptide chain. Both polypeptide chains are remains are every poly, uh, different power polypeptide chain remains connected with the help of sulfur bridges, right? So we have joined both of the polypeptide chain with the help of sulfur bridges, and that's how human insulin have been formed with the help of transgenic bacteria. Tell me, is it clear? Yes, sir. So can you explain the formation of this chain again? Uh, this one, a normal process? Yes, sir. Okay, look, uh, when human insulin is produced in our body, human body, naturally, right? So what happened? Uh, the human insulin, which is inactive, it is produced in our body, like in our beta cells of Langerhans, in an active form. When it is produced in beta cells, it have the three polypeptide chain: A polypeptide chain, B polypeptide chain, and C polypeptide chain. These polypeptide chain removes folded with the help of disulfur uh, uh, sulfur bridge or sulfate bonds. Then what happened? This insulin, this inactive insulin, goes for maturation. At the maturation process, this C polypeptide chain, this red color C polypeptide chain is removed, right? C polypeptide chain removed. 
and only A and B polypeptide chain is left, right? Now, this is active insulin and this is insulin convert glucose into glycogen. Clear? Yes, sir. When we make artificial insulin, we make only A and B polypeptide chains separately. After getting both of the chain, with the help of disulfide bridges, we fuse both of them and our insulin is ready for market. Okay. <clears throat> this was the human insulin formation or humulin formation. Now, BT cotton. Actually, now uh, you'll get number of the question uh, from this topic only. That's a very old topic. But they ask the, they ask the question in different, different ways, right? Look, what happened? Uh, BT cotton, first thing, uh, what is the BT gene, right? Let me tell you what is the BT gene. Okay, there is a disease in the cotton. A disease is caused by a worm. That is a round worm, right? And the name of that worm is cotton ball worm. Cotton ball worm eat the 50% of cotton uh, uh, flour, right? They, keep, they eat the 50% of cotton, uh, cotton balls or cotton flour or bud, they, due to which the Productivity reduces by the 50%, right? And this cotton ball is enemy of the cotton plant. Okay. Now this cotton plant, this cotton ball worm, there is an enemy of this cotton ball worm. The name of that bacteria, that is a bacteria. The name of that bacteria is Bacillus thuringiensis. Bacillus thuringiensis, this bacteria, it goes inside the stomach or gut of cotton ball worm. When it goes inside the gut of cotton ball worm, it produces a type of it produces a type of toxin called Bt toxin. Bt toxin puncture the Bt toxin. It puncture the gut of ball worm. Puncture gut of ball worm. And due to this ball worm type, right? Is that clear? Now, in inside the bacillus thuringiensis, there is a gene which produces this gene. Name of that gene is cry gene. Is it clear? Clear? Or any doubt? Yes, sir. Clear. Fine. So you have to remember the cry gene which produces Bt toxin, okay? I have a question. How does Bt toxin get activated inside the gut of cotton ball worm? When Bt bacillus thuringiensis produces Bt toxin, it is in an active form. And inside the gut of that worm, it becomes active. How does it become active? Tell me, Ramya, you are spelling. So the alkaline pH in the... Very answer. good, very good, very good. Actually, uh, it is there in MCRT. Actually, this Bt toxin is secreted from the... Uh, uh, Bt toxin is secreted from the uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, Bt bacteria, but in an active form. But when it gets the alkaline medium, basic medium, in the gut of cotton ball worm, it become active and it puncture the, uh, that puncture the uh, wall of, that epithelial wall of the ball worm and that's how the ball worm died. So, we know that the, uh, the enemy of cotton is ball worm. Enemy of ball worm is Bt. So, Bt is the friend of cotton. So, what we, we, we did, we put this cry gene inside the cotton plant. And we made the Bt cotton. Now, the Bt cotton is a transgenic plant. It is a transgenic plant. Now, this transgenic plant produces 
Pt toxin produces Pt toxin. The Pt toxin, this Pt toxin is not harmful for animals. Other animal is not harmful for other animal and human. Now the Bt toxin is produced inside. When the ball worm will start eating the cotton, uh, cotton plant, it will die. Right. So that's how the Bt cotton is made. Go through with it and tell me if you have any doubt regarding this one. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Very good. One very important thing. Look. There is one more question. This Bt toxin is a type of protein. What is Bt toxin? It's a type of insecticidal which work again insect insecticidal protein if you get the question what is bt toxin so B, bt toxin is a type of insecticidal protein right it kills three category of insect category of because the question uh, have been asked from here is not there in PPT. So let me inform this. What are those category? Lapidopterons. Then polyopterons. and dipterons. In lapidopterons, tobacco ball worm and army worm ball worm come. Tobacco ball worm and army worm. So it kills lapidopterons. It kills polyopterons. Under polyopterons, beetle comes. Beetles. Under dipterons, fly and mosquito comes. So Bt toxin can kill lapidopterons, polyopterons, and dipterons all the time. Means it can kill tobacco ball worm, army worm, uh, beetles, fly, and mosquito. Is that clear? Please note it down like this way only. This is the way to uh, prepare notes for the uh, medical. Note it. Again, one more important. So what is cry gene? I have already told you that cry gene is 
बीटी टॉक्सिन प्रोड्यूसिंग जीन क्राई जीन इज बीटी टॉक्सिन प्रोड्यूसिंग जीन राइट नाउ क्राई जीन कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप क्राई फर्स्ट ए सी वन जीन एंड क्राई सेकेंड ए बी राइट दिस क्राई फर्स्ट ए सी एंड क्राई सेकेंड ए बी इट किल्स कॉटन बॉल बॉम right and there is another gene that cry 1b cry 1b it kill it, it, it control corn borer or rather it kills corn borer right that also you need to know it on Done or not? Tell me. Done, sir. Okay. So, come to the next one. Uh, yes. The last thing in this chapter that is the RNA interference, right? RNA I. that is rna interference right what is the rna interference so this technique is basically used for for against use against the this technique is basically used against nematode or against a round worm or nematodes nematodes so it is used again around worm or nematodes right when you we use this technique again nematodes or round worm are an interference right so there is a uh, there is a the example which is given in your ncert and that is the uh, uh, round worm and the name of that uh, round worm is uh, melodogyne incognitia right so that is the round worm मेलेडो गायनी यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर द नेम मेलेडो गायनी इनकॉग्निशिया मेलेडो गायनी इनकॉग्निशिया इज अ वॉम इनफैक्ट दैट रूट ऑफ टोबेको प्लांट राइट डिस्ट्रॉय व्हाट इट डू it destroy the root of tobacco plant it destroy root of tobacco plant means it decreases the decreases the uh productivity of tobacco productivity of tobacco it decreases the productivity of tobacco 
right? It destroys the root to, uh, uh, of tobacco crop and destroy the that right? decreases the productivity of tobacco. Right? Now we have to destroy this uh, um, uh, this one. So what exactly we need? We use a technique that is called RNA interference, right? So in RNA interference, in RNA and this RNA interference process, RNAi can be used. It can be used for all eukaryotes. Can be used for all eukaryotes. Right? So what we do in this process, we use the using agrobacterium that is TI plasmid using the TI plasmid as vector or rather than TI plasmid we directly use the agrobacterium AGBT AGBT used as vector right. agrobacterium use as vector now what we do nematode specific gene is transferred into host plant nematode the specific gene is transferred to host plant right and now this host plant now what happened when this nematode is specific gene is transferred to host plant host plant make a uh, host plant make a uh, rna host plant make a complementary complementary mrna now this complementary mrna this RNA may a double stranded RNA. It goes inside the uh, nematode and it may a double stranded RNA, DS RNA. That is double stranded RNA in nematode what will happen for the translation single stranded rna is required but rna is double stranded if rna is double stranded what will happen the translation translation process will stop translation process will stop in nematode when translation process will stop protein production will stop and nematode will die nematode will die the process of production of double stranded rna and the stopping the production of protein is called dna silencing this process this is step is called dna and this complete process is called RNA interference. A single stranded RNA made a double stranded RNA, and that's how this have interfered, right? RNA interference. It have interfered the protein production process of the nematode, and the process, complete process, is known as RNAi or RNA interference. And this technique is basically used for the uh, uh, used against the nematodes. Tell me. Yes. Is it clear or any doubt? Is that clear? Aram, Heather, Alia, all of you? Yes, sir. Taken the screenshot. Remember the name of 
melido guanine incognitia this have been asked and rna interference is uh, uh, it work uh, against the nematode this question have been asked gene silencing or dna silencing this is also a question so uh, this is all about this chapter one more important yes yes one more important thing that is the biopiracy uh, let me tell you what is the biopiracy it's not a very big question uh, biopiracy is actually uh, the part when you uh, use a particular gene sequence of a biological resource let me give you an example actually what happened uh, we are using the neem neem plant you must have seen the neem plant have you seen we call that as a directica indica in india yes so neem plant it have the medicinal value neem plant is actually neem plant um, is grown in india since the thousands of year, thousands of years that's mentioned in the number of the books like three as in 300 or 3000 or 4000 uh, year older uh, epics literature and all that right scientists have discovered that it has been used so uh, this is in record so what happened a company or a usa company of usa united states they have taken the sequence of the neem and they have incorporated that sequence of the neem uh, in a uh, plant right and with the help of that they started the making the medicine right with the help of that sequence they started the medicine and use uh, production of the medicine and commercially selling them when india came to know we have uh, we have made a objection right in international court that this is a biopiracy without the permission of our country without the permission of government you are using the biological resources for the commercial production if any person is using it for the personal purpose that is not a biopiracy but if you are using it for the commercial purpose that is a biopiracy right so uh, uh, that that patent have been cancelled right so that's what what is that so without the permission of any government any person or any particular community if you are using the biological resources uh, biological resources that is called a biopiracy got it yes okay uh there are uh, a factual thing you can note it down there are estimated 2 lakh varieties of rice in india alone and the diversity of the rice in india is richest in the world this question have been asked it is also a question note it down it is in ncrt page number 214 this question have been asked Now, uh, that's it for this chapter. And if you have any query, any question regarding this chapter, please ask me. Please clear right now. And we have completed biotechnology as well. The next will be human reproduction. So first, uh, go through with the uh, complete chapter or complete both of the chapter of biotechnology. If you have any doubt, ask me right now. And then we will start with the human reproduction.
Done. Could we start the next chapter? Yes, sir. Heather, all done? Yes, yes, sir. Alia, Alia. Great. Still, uh, uh, after the class, you you have to go with the uh, previous year question paper as usual, and uh, the uh, NCRT as well. And in case if you have any question, note it down and ask me next class. Right. So now we will start with the human reproduction. Right. As we are going through the weightage, first we covered the genetics, then biotech. Uh, now we will uh, do the human reproduction and then plant reproduction. Right. The first and foremost thing, important thing, which you have to cram the gestation period, which is written in front of the screen, right? What is the gestation period? Means the time period for which uh, any organism carry a baby inside its womb, right? The gestation period for the rat is a 20 days. They carry the baby for the 20 days. The gestation period for a rabbit is 30 days. For a human, 280 days. For a whale, 365 days. For a rhinosaurus, 510 days. And maximum with the elephant for 641 days. That you have to remember. It's important. Now, what is the primary sex organ? What is the secondary sex organ? What is the accessory? Right. So basically, the primary sex organs are those only which produces the gamete, right? So basically, the gonads are called primary sex organs, male gonads and female gonads. Male gonads are testis and female gonads are ovary. Testis produces the sperm and ovary produces the egg. The sperm is male gamete and, you know, egg is female gamete. What are the secondary, secondary sex organs? Secondary sex organs are basically those ducts which help in the transfer of gamete from one place to another. So, reproductive genital tract, first thing. Reproductive or genital gland. So, gland, those which produces hormone and tract which transfer the gamete, they are the secondary sex organs. They do not produce any kind of the gamete or hormone, right? They do not produce any kind of the gamete, right? So these glands and these tract, right? They are called secondary sex characteristics. Accessory sex organ. What are the accessory sex organ? That question I've been asked. Accessory sex organ are those characteristics which differentiate or distinguish two sexes clearly. Like it, dis, uh, it uh, differentiate between male and female. A beard and mustache, they are the accessory sex characteristic. They differentiate a male in human from the female, right? So body build, accessory sex characteristic. Body build means a structure of body. Larynx, that is Adam apple, which is found in human in uh, males, not in females, right? And subcutaneous fat. The fat which is present inside our uh, skin uh, that make uh, it is it is low in uh, males. That's why the skin of the male is rough. It is much more in quantity in the female. That's why the skin of females is the smooth. That is the difference between two. And hair, hair on the body, right? So body hair that also differentiate a male from the female. So these are accessory sex characteristics. Accessory sex characteristics are responsible for differentiating two sex clearly and sometimes they are responsible for attraction of opposite sex. That's it. Is that clear? Okay. Now come to the male reproductive organ. So let's discuss with the more reproductive organ. Look, uh, this this is the testis, which is remains covered, remain covered with a cover, 
and that cover or pouch is known as scrotum. A scrotum or pouch is called thermoregulator. Uh, this thermoregulator, because they maintain the temperature of the testes, that's why scrotum is called thermoregulator. Uh, they maintain the temperature of testes lower than 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade lower than the body temperature, right? It means 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade less than the our body temperature, right? Testes are produced or originate inside the abdominal cavity. That you need to remember. Testes, they originate inside the abdominal cavity. In the seven month of development, at the seven month of de development, these testes come out of the body, right? They come out of the body at the seven month of the development, right? And then they produce. Sometimes they do not come out of the body. If they do not come out, the, out of the body, it causes sterility, right? The purpose of testis is production of sperm. And these sperm are produced from the testis. They come out in this part. This is called epididymis. Epididymis is the part where maturation of sperm takes place. So maturation takes place. And the question which has been asked in medical examination, what is the function? The function which has been asked, that is the, they store here temporarily. They store temporarily at this point, right? Then the sperm are transferred to where uh, this vast differences. Then these from vast differences, this sperm reaches to seminal vesicle. Seminal vesicle releases a fluid called seminal fluid, which add fluid to the sperm, seminal fluid. And then this reaches to here where the prostate gland produces uh, uh, prostate secretion, right? And again, they provide motility and nutrition to the sperm. And there is a bulbourethral gland that produces, also called copper's gland. It produces uh, some basic substances, basic fluid, right? And thus, the sperm is finally released with the help of urethra. So this is the uh, this is the male reproductive system. And whatever written in the screen, that is very important for you. And uh, the function of seminal vesicle, bulbourethral gland, and prostate gland will again uh, discuss in the next class, right? Is it okay? Okay, sir. Right. So ask me if you have question. Uh, let's see on the next class. And till the time you have to again, I'm saying that you have to do the question of 2018 onward and uh, note down the doubt, discuss with me, note down the concept which are not clear, discuss with me next time. Right? Okay, sir. So okay, bye bye.